What's up everybody? Today we're going to be going through how to create this little frog rig which is an excellent first character for beginners and this is actually from a full scene I did which I walk you through how to create in my Skillshare course. Link in the description below if you're interested in that but today we're going to be walking through how to model, rig, and animate this frog here. So what I'm going to do is come up to our preferences first and we want to make sure we have some add-ons enabled. So if you come to preferences, add-ons, and you search extra, you want to turn on add mesh extra objects. I recommend turning on curve as well. What that allows us to do is that under the mesh section, we'll get a lot more options. So first we're going to murder the default cube, and then we're going to go ahead and get rid of the camera because we don't need that either. Now we're going to hit shift A, go to mesh, go to round cube, and then here you'll see down here we have a round cube preset operator that we can use. I'm gonna come down here. I want this frog to have a lower poly look just from a stylistic standpoint. You can make yours as high poly as you want. I'm gonna go ahead, drop this arc down to four, which will make it lower poly. I'm gonna hit shade smooth there. And then I'm gonna press one to switch to my front orthographic view. Now we're gonna go ahead and model this to look a bit more like the frog. So we're going to go into edit mode here switch to wireframe. I'm going to box select down here at the bottom. Then I'm going to hit SZ. Then I'm going to type in period one. And what that's doing is scaling that down to 10% the size. And that'll just kind of flatten out the bottom there. Now I'm going to press GZ. And I'm going to kind of drag that up so that these kind of faces here are about similar in length there because we want to keep good topology. Then I'm going to hit S and I'm going to scale that out so that this has more of a natural arc there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these, I'm going to hit G, Z, and I'm going to move these up here. And then I'm going to hit Control R, likewise you can use the loop tool, and that will just access the loop tool there. And then if I scroll up on my mouse wheel, I'm trying to just get even kind of topology there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this proportional editing tool here, and that'll add a sphere of influence so that we're scaling up some things around it. I'm going to grab all of these and I can play that sphere of influence as much as I want there, but I'm gonna kinda scale that up. And what we're trying to do is create a fat little frog. And what I'm actually gonna do is deselect those, grab the middle ones here, and kinda play with this there. Now you can keep playing with this until you get something you like. I'm just trying to kinda create a fat little frog body, like I said, and that looks good there. Maybe a little bit more there. And now we kinda have a little hump for our frog. Now if you want, I made mine kind of uniform all around. You can go ahead and kind of play around the edge there if you'd like to create more of a frog-like shape. I'm gonna go back into edit mode. And now what I'm going to do is create some little triangle feet for him. But before I do that, I have my origin point here and I'm gonna keep my origin point at the bottom of my frog. So I'm gonna select everything by pressing A. Then I'm gonna press G and Z. And then I'm going to move that up so that kind of this bottom line there rests on the bottom of the origin point. Now when we're in object mode and we rotate him, he'll rotate around his body there. So let's go back into edit mode. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing because that might cause me issues in the future. And what I'm going to do is add a cube inside edit mode. So now I can move this cube over here to the side. I'm going to go into top view here. And what I'm gonna do is still in wireframe mode, I'm going to grab this going to kind of drag that there so that we get kind of a triangle. And if you want, you can actually just dissolve those vertices and then reconnect them. But I don't mind having that there. It's not too much extra topology. So go ahead there, grab this back one here, and we're going to kind of stretch that out until we get a little triangle. Now I'm going to go back to front view. And if I'm in uh, vertex selection mode right now, I'd have to hover over the vertices, but I'm gonna to switch to face selection by pressing three. You can also change up there. Now, if I hold L over this face, it will grab this object because this object is separate. So I'm gonna move that object over here for a second. And then you can hit S, Z, and scale that down. And you can see that kind of gives us a little triangle foot there. Now I want that to come out the center here. So I'm gonna go ahead, just rotate that, move that in there so that it's right there around the cursor. Then up here, I'm going to change this from median point to 3D cursor. And I'm going to scale that down and kind of rotate that until I get a somewhat kind of like good size for his foot there. 
and I want to give him big feet because he is a frog. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to come back up here. I'm going to change this back to median point, and I can drag this out here until our foot is kind of visible. And in front view, I'm going to make sure that this is under his body or at least kind of parallel with his body there. And then I'm going to go back into wireframe mode so I can kind of see. And I'm just going to go ahead, duplicate that, rotate that, and put that on the other side in a similar position. If you want, you could add a mirror modifier, but I think that's a bit much work for how simple this operation is. So with that, we have our little frog with his frog feet. So let's go ahead and create some eyes. So we'll go back into edit mode here and we're going to add a, another round cube. Now it should remember your settings from the last time. So I'm just going to leave mine to default settings. I'm going to move my cube over here and then I'm going to duplicate that cube, switch to wireframe mode so I can see both of those. I'm gonna to switch to side view. You can use the little uh, gizmo up here, but I'm going to press three and then I'm going to move that forward there. And if you want, you can press Y to kind of snap that to the axis. And I'm gonna hit S, Y, kind of scale that in. And what we're doing here is kind of creating the white part of the eyeball. Now I'm just gonna scale that down overall and just kind of move that back a bit. And let's go into solid view and kind of see what we have there. So we're kind of creating a little cartoon frog eye there. And I'm just gonna move that back a little bit more. Again, you can play with this until you get a look that you like. Now I wanna kind of create a large pupil. So I'm going to hit Shift D again, and that will duplicate that eye. Switch to wireframe mode so I can see that. And I'm switching to my side view here by pressing three on the number pad. I'm gonna scale that down. Switch back to solid view so I can see I'm gonna put G and Y and move that out there again. And now we kind of have a big pupil for our frog eye. And I actually want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale that up because I feel like frogs have giant pupils. Now we're going to duplicate that one more time. And this is just so we can kind of simulate the look of a um, eye highlight. And we can kind of just keep switching back into side view there. I'm gonna rotate this a bit, move this over here and duplicate this here. And if you remember in the final result, I kind of showed that the frog had those little highlights. This is all I was doing. Now I feel like the overall frog eye there is starting to kind of jut out a bit too far. So I'm gonna press L over the objects I want to move back and I can kind of scale those back in, move that, maybe scale that back in a little further. And then I'm actually just going to select all of these and scale them in on the Y just a little bit and that'll keep them from getting a little too crazy. Now for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to move on, but I do encourage you to kind of finesse this until you get a look that you're happy with. But with there, we kind of have our eyeball. So let's switch back to our front view here. And what we'll do is we'll switch to wireframe mode. We'll go ahead, click and drag here. And we're going to select that whole eye we're going to scale that in. We're gonna kind of position that onto our frog to give our frog some big little eyes there. Then I'm gonna tab in the top view here and kind of position that where I want that on our frog. Switch back over to solid view. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now what you can do is you can hit Shift D to duplicate that, move that on the X axis, and you can move that on over there. And with that, we kind of have our little frog with kind of his big eyes. So now let's go on how we want to texture this. So back out here in object mode, I'm gonna right click, hit shade smooth, and we'll texture this next. So I'm gonna show you kind of a fun texturing method that's like pretty common within video games, and I cover this more in the Skillshare course, but I'm gonna come over here to UV editing. I'm gonna to switch to front view here, and I'm gonna select everything, make sure I'm in edit mode, and you can see that I have this gradient palette here. Now I have a link in the description if you want to download my palette, but all I did is I created a palette here with varying gradient colors and I left space so I could update them later and add more colors if I wanted. But what we're going to do is project our UV and put it on here and then when we scale it, we'll get kind of contrast. Now this is a pretty common technique in video games and I've seen Maya users do it and I've seen other Blender users do it. I don't claim to have created this technique, but I do use it a lot because it is very useful. So let's talk about how we're gonna do this. So here in our front view, we're going to select everything and we're going to hit U and then we're going to do project from view. 
And you can see that kind of splats our frog there. So then we can go ahead and start grabbing these different pieces and kind of moving them around on the gradient. So I'm gonna bring this over here, kind of scale this down and show you what I mean. So for these, we're gonna deselect everything over here. We're going to press L on these highlights because we want these to all be white. And we're going to grab the eye here. And then if we grab all of those UVs and drag them over here and scale them down to fit on the white there, then these will become white. So let's go ahead and switch that to material view. And we'll go ahead and get our texture set up so that we can see this live. So let's come to the shader editor. I'm gonna twirl this in here. We're going to add a new material. We'll call this frog. And then we'll get rid of this and we'll add an emission node and plug that into the surface. And then we will add a mix shader node and if you have Node Wrangler enable add-on, you can just go ahead and drag that there, but you just wanna make sure this is in the bottom here. Then we're going to do a search light path. Now this is because I want a shadeless shader, meaning that there won't be any shadows or highlights and it won't be affected by the lights, but using just an emission node would cast light into our scene, which is not what I want. So this little setup right here will give you an emission node so you get a flat shader, but it, with this camera ray here into the factor with nothing in the top, you're going to disable the kind of emission factor of that node, meaning it won't cast light into your scene. So let's go ahead here, add an image texture node select our color palette, drag this color into the image, and then now we can kind of see that things are showing up on our frog. So let's go back to the UV editor there. And so we want his eyes to be white, and we want his pupils to be black. Now, I don't like to use pure black, so I've gone ahead and created this kind of like bluish black up here and the reason I don't like to do pure black is because it's the absence of color and I like a little bit of color in kind of everything on my scenes. So here's where like this effect gets really kind of unique and useful. So what we can do is we can grab this body here. We can grab the feet and the eyes. So we'll grab that and then again I'm just pressing L to select all those objects. And let's go ahead, scale this in on the X over here so that it will fit in here. And then what we can do is grab this over one of the greens here, depending on what type of green you wanna use. I'm gonna use this one over here. And we can see that it's showing the gradient across our frog there. Now, when we grab that gradient, we can actually determine like how contrasted we want that gradient to be by kind of changing the size there. And if we wanna encompass that whole gradient, or we can go ahead, kind of slam that down so that we only see a little bit of the gradient. I kind of liked it how it was at the first setting there. And I might scale that up just a tiny bit more to get a little bit of kind of whiteness in there or the lighter greenness, I should say. And there you can see that our frog is starting to kind of get its gradiented look. Let's go ahead and add kind of the yellow on their stomach. So let's go ahead into edit mode here. And I want the bottom of him to be yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna actually select this body here, and then I'm going to hit Control I, then I'm going to hit H, that's going to hide everything. Then what I'm gonna do is go to bottom view, which you can do by hitting Control seven or coming up here to the view tab or using a gizmo. So hit Control seven there, drag and select there. And that's kind of actually selected there. So I'm gonna hit wireframe mode and then I'm gonna hit circle um, by C, I'll open the circle select and then I can middle click, drag across there to get rid of those. I'm gonna switch back to my material view and I want this kind of like whole stomach to be yellow. So I'm just gonna go ahead, grab those and then I'm gonna take it over here and move that up here and scale that up so that we get more of a gradiated look. And then what I can do is come back over here I can tab one or click up here to get in vertex mode. And I'm gonna double tap G so that I can kind of just move along there. Let's see. I don't wanna distort the shape too much. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab that, move that so we get kind of more of a slanted look. Now this isn't great topology, but it doesn't really matter for the type of animation we're doing. And because I didn't move along the normals there, those kind of got messed up. So I'm just gonna to go to top view and I'm just going to move those back a little bit to kind of keep our round shape for a frog. So with that, we have our frog fully textured and now we're ready to do that kind of little croaking rig that I'd created, which was just a really simple shape key. 
So what I'm gonna do is go back to my layout view here, switch to material view, and then I'm going to kind of zoom in a bit there. Let's click over on this object data tab. And then when we come down here, we will have the option to kind of create different pieces here. And up here we have shape keys, which should be twirled down by default. I'm gonna click once that will create a basis shape key, which is our frog. I'm gonna type one more and I'm going to name this croak. After you've named that croak, go ahead and go into edit mode here. And by default, everything's still kind of hidden, which is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and select in wireframe mode, the top piece of this, make sure proportional editing is on. And I'm gonna kind of scale up this whole body so that it looks kind of bloated like that. And then I'm gonna move it a tiny bit up on the Z. Now, if I hit Alt-H, it will bring everything else back. And then we can go ahead and kind of animate the position of these. So let's go ahead, grab these feet, let's move, turn off our sphere of influence, and we're going to move those out a bit and kind of like rotate those. And again, I'm just hitting L to select these. So I'll kind of go ahead, do that over here as well, just make the feet a bit more visible. And then I'm actually going to, um, select everything and then I'm going to hit shift L which will allow me to deselect object and I'm going to deselect the body and the feet just because the eyes kind of have a lot of pieces and they're more complicated and what we can do is drag these up on the Z there and then we can kind of select these in wireframe mode so I can select the entire object and I'm going to rotate mine a bit and kind of move those in around the edges there and that kind of gives me my little croak frog. So if I come back out here to object mode and then we take the value here, we can then animate that value up and we see that it looks like he's croaking. And then to add a keyframe, what you do is you just hit I over that zero there, move forward, then you can move up and add an I again. And then on my case, I actually went down a little bit and added a little bit of kind of like wave into his croak so it looked like he was kind of like breathing and then snapped him back down to zero. So if we go ahead and watch that back and I'm just pressing I to insert all those keyframes, we can see that we get a little croak. Now in this case, the croak is way too slow. So I'm just gonna scale that down so you can see that kind of faster. Change this to 30. And there we go. Now we have our little croaking frog. As usual, I am always excited to see what you create. So please tag me in your creations on Instagram and these project files will be available on my Patreon if you're interested in supporting me there. Thank you for watching and let me know what you'd like to see in the future.